Bismillah wa alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. Wa la hawla wa la quwati illa billah. Wa la hawla wa la quwati illa billah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin fil awalin. Wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin fil akhirin. Wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin fil mala il ala ila yawm al-deen. Alhamdulillah, we gather another evening in the nights of Ramadan to reflect uh, upon one of the beautiful ad'iyah of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learn from them their adab, their disposition and their characteristics and their character traits, excuse me, and their comportment and how they spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so today we have with us um, one of the ad'iyah that um, is oft mentioned on the tongues of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first among them to mention this dua was Sayyiduna Adam. And the dua, um, as we have, I'm sure, all know it. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِلْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you forgive us not, and bestow upon not upon us your mercy, we shall certainly be of the losers. This dua, you know, I'm going to title it as the Adamic dua. The Adamic dua because it really does illustrate the spirit of the person in this ummah who seeks to follow in the footsteps of Sayyiduna Adam. See, in the beginning of creation, there were two, if you will, um, fundamental orientations that were established. You have the satanic and demonic, shaitani orientation, and you have the Adamic orientation. The shaitani orientation was of, obviously, Iblis, where he, uh, he committed a wrong. He made a mistake. He made a huge mistake when he disobeyed the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And rather than being humble, and rather than returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he decided to double down. He decided to indulge his ego and his arrogance. And he never repented. Rather, he almost challenged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not almost, he did. And he said that, I will sit on the path. You know, I'm going to sit on the path and I'm going to dissuade them and dismay your and your, your you know your believers, your creation, etc. And that's that satanic orientation is the one that is rooted in in ego and self-centeredness and arrogance. Whereas the Adamic orientation is an orientation that is grounded in humility, it is an orientation that is grounded in a recognition that we make mistakes. And that we falter. And so Sayyiduna Adam, he made a mistake. Allah told him not to uh, get near that tree. And he did. Alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had him leave heaven. And the immediate response of Sayyiduna Adam was in a state of tadallul, in a state of humility, and lowering himself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He utters these words, Rabbana, ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. We have truly wronged ourselves. It is we who have wronged ourselves. You know, in the satanic orientation, it's, I, uh, you know, if it wasn't for you, Allah, I wouldn't have done this. You know, I was, you know, it's always, it's always attributing the fault elsewhere or outside, right? As if, as if I am not to be blamed, and I'm always deflecting blame. That's a satanic orientation. The Adamic orientation, I have wronged myself. I have made the mistake. And the word here is zulm. And zulm is, is oppression. And, and yes, when I sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm committing a huge form of oppression. And the, the object of that oppression is none other but myself. And certainly no one seeks to be oppressed or we hate oppression in general when we see it around. And certainly we do not want uh, oppression to be upon ourselves. So we say, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِلْ لَنَا And oh Allah, 
if you don't choose to forgive us, if you don't choose to forgive me for this shortcoming. So, and this is a recognition that, Ya Allah, it is completely by your grace and your mercy, meaning it's fully in your hands. The satanic orientation is almost as if it's an expectation, right? That ana, yani, ujibu ala Allah. I make obligatory upon Allah to give me certain things, as if I am entitled to it. And and that's that's an orientation that is very self-destructive, that overly indulgent, self-centered, uh, very much entitled. Whereas the Adamic one is. In lam lana, if you do not choose to forgive me, then certainly I will be amongst the losers. And this is a form of really humbling oneself in the in the divine court to say, Ya Allah, I am nothing without you. I will be no one without you. I will be completely at a loss if you don't choose to shower you shower me with your grace. وَتَرْحَمْنَا And to have mercy upon me. And this is when, when, when you imagine yourself asking anyone for mercy. If, 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 if you see someone about to harm a child of yours, and you tell this person, have mercy. You know, what's your disposition at that point? Or you're, you're going to someone and you're completely, you know, on fumes. You have nothing in your bank account. You're struggling you're barely making ends meet and you go to someone and you say please have mercy on me i have kids i need i need i need to feed my children what's your disposition when you ask for that type of mercy and so when we make a mistake we go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we affirm this we say oh allah if you don't forgive me if you don't pardon me for this mistake and you don't have mercy upon me then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be so lost. I'm going to be defunct. I'm going to have nothing. I'm going to spiritually die without your mercy and your forgiveness. And that's, brothers and sisters, the type of humility that we want to bring to the space of dua with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana, in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. And may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, my dear brothers and sisters, to always be Adamic in our orientation. It's not impossible, and it's not necessarily, you know, wrong or evil that we will commit mistakes. We, we will make mistakes, and these mistakes will be sins that we should have never committed. And the problem is not to make the mistake per se, but the problem is to be arrogant and belligerent and insistent upon the mistake, you know, to, to be boastful about my mistake, rather than to go to Allah with humility, I double down on my own ego. I say, it's completely fine for me to dress this way. It's completely fine for me to have this money. It's completely fine for me to do this act. I don't see what the big deal is, you know? And no, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because as Imam Al-Ghazali say, says, don't look at, the, at the, the, the size of your sin. You know, some people will look at a small sin and say, ah, you know, it's just a small sin. Inshallah, it's not that big of a deal. You know, Allah forgives. You know, almost in a very dismissive fashion. Allah forgives. But Sayyidina Imam Ghazali and others have said, no, unzur ila idhami man ta'si. Look at the magnificence at the one uh, against whom you are sinning. And so, yes, you know, Sayyidina Adam, he just got near a tree. <laughs> you know, many of us, you know, there there are things that Allah tells us not to do that are of the kabair, and we not only get close to it, we do it. May Allah forgive us. But Sayyidina Adam, in a state of recognizing that Allah just brought him into existence, and that he is truly nothing without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he only exists by the grace and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So rather than ever assert oneself egotistically, and assume that somehow I have a voice in front of Allah that must be heard, or I have an opinion against the uh, religion or the dictates of the Quran and the Sunnah that must be registered because I'm a person of intellect or I am someone who has a great rationale around these things. 
And I, you know, as someone who's grown up in one, two, three, four, someone who's educated in X, Y, Z, you know, well, that's not that, that's not that big of a deal. It's not that, you know, Islam is not petty in that way. God is, audhu billah, not petty in that way. No. The disposition should be immediately. Rabbana, zalamna anfusana, fa'in lam taghfil lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. Ya Allah, we have wronged ourselves. And if you don't forgive us and have mercy upon us, then we will truly be amongst the losers. My dear brothers and sisters, please allow this to be the spirit that you bring to your dua. A spirit of recognizing the fault and the mistake. And that we are our fuqara and masakeen. We are impoverished and in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness. And that without him, we will always be nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be Adamic in our, ori our orientation. Always humble, always repenting. You know, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خَطَّى Every son of Adam will make mistakes. As the Prophet ﷺ says, وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّئِينَ التَّوَّبُونَ And the best of those who make mistakes are those who repent oftly. تَوَّابُونَ So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be humble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and our weaknesses and our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautify us with the beauty of this sacred tradition, ad dinul islami May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our time in dua with him, Jalla fi ula, a beautiful time, a time of intimacy and regret and humility, a time of khudu'a and khushu'a, tranquility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan a moment where we connect to Allah in a way that we've never connected before, that we spend intimate, quiet time with Allah in conversation, in prayer, in istighfar and tawbah, seeking forgiveness and repenting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you with a wondrous Ramadan. May Allah make us all from the utaqa of an nar May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all who, from amongst those whose necks will be saved from Jahannam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to attain the greatest felicity and the greatest joy. And that is to be in the company of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to be in the company of Sayyiduna Adam. Imagine, you know, that we get to be in the company of Sayyiduna Adam and Sayyiduna Ibrahim and Sayyiduna Musa and Sayyiduna Isa and Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidah Khadija and Sayyidah Hafsa and Sayyidah Asma and Sayyidah Aisha and Sayyidah Sauda and all of these, Sayyidah Halima, Allahu Akbar, if we can be in all of their company. And the only way to get there, to be in their company is to follow in their footsteps and to embody their humble disposition, to not be jababira, to not be arrogant on this earth. May Allah make us like them. يا رب العالمين بارك الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله